Uh, jag pratar en relativt bra svenska, men uh, jag kan uttrycka mig bättre. Um, so, it is very unfortunate that I cannot join you in Dalarna. Uh, but you know, we all have, in the end of the day, a boss. And my boss uh, in Argentina requested me to be present in Buenos Aires for the presentation of uh, the Blue Economy Strategy in Argentina, which includes a very large portion of how to rethink the agriculture. And here I am in the Netherlands, in Rotterdam, at the Blue City. This is a center of change uh, next to, to the Maas River, and this is a center of change where a group of about 20 entrepreneurs are pulling together their creative minds and energy in order to have a fresh look at food, at energy, at clothing, at water, and it is that kind of a fundamental reflection that we need. Uh, let, let's just think for a second, what is the challenge? Most of the farmers today don't make money. One of the greatest challenges is that the farmers don't make money because the way we have set up the system of uh, producing value is not retributing, is not compensating, is not paying the farmer the fair price. And therefore, let's take some of the cases of the blue economy. Now, what is blue economy? For us, blue economy is, first of all, work with what you have. Second, focus on generating value. Because if you're not generating value and you're only entering into a world commodity market, what is it that you can expect to be paid more than if you're just basically competing against American genetics uh, or Chinese uh, low labor costs. So therefore, the blue economy proposes that we work with what we have, we generate more value and we respond to the basic needs first. If we're not responding to basic needs, then we don't have a security over time. Let's think for a second. How many days do you think Sweden could operate if no food were imported anymore. No food imported. The calculations go that most of the shops would go empty within a week. And that means what? Sweden has a resilience when it comes to energy and petroleum, but Sweden has no resilience when it comes to food. Food reserves. There are no strategic food reserves in the world, but for some grains. But how can we secure that people have food, and not only quality food in the future. So the first challenge we have is we need to think about a strategic food supply. And that only way we can ensure that there is a strategic food supply is that we have local food production. Communities have to start producing again what their land is capable of producing. And the freshness needs to be there, and the content needs to be there. And there comes the second big challenge. Unfortunately, we always hear that organic agriculture is more expensive and less productive than the modern agriculture. Let's think again. If you are only measuring kilos for kilos, of course the kilo of apples that come from Chile may even be cheaper than the beautiful apples that are grown in Sweden. But if you look at the content of the apple, we realize that kilo per kilo, they may be cheaper. But when we calculate it on the basis of nutrition in the apple, then the organic local apple has much more nutrition, much higher value. And what in the end do we need? Do we need the kilos or do we need the nutrition? We need the apple's minerals in order for our hormonal system to work for our immune system to kick in. And that is not what we're getting from a kilo of apples that have been traded around the world. We need to therefore change, as Andres Wiegmann is insisting so often with us, we need to change the metrics. If we're not measuring the right thing, then of course we're only having the wrong results. And the wrong results is that we believe that the globalization is giving us a much better result than we actually have for our health and for our nutrition. So setting the framework against this, let us now see how we can make certain that small scale farmers are competitive in that environment. So permit me to go and take you to Sweden, so from Sweden to Spain. In Spain, we have been working for more than 
25 years on a small island called El Hierro. El Hierro is an island in the Canaries. It is one of these islands that decided that tourism is not what they want to have. But what was the problem? In the 70s and the 80s, less and less children were interested to grow up in this isolated part of the world, which is three hours from Madrid and only 200 kilometers from the coast of Africa. When you look at the reality, of course, people were much more interested, young people were much more attracted by having, well, yeah, by having the pleasure of being in Barcelona, Valencia or Madrid. And the parents started complaining that the kids didn't even want to come for Christmas, not even for dad's birthday party. That was the moment that the population of 10,000 people on the island decided if we continue the way we are doing it today, we will have an empty island in 25 to 30 years. What changed? Well, what changed was that in the first place they realized what they have. And when you have 15,000 goats that are eating the shrubs, very well controlled, that otherwise will turn into weeds, then you have a goat. But if you have the goat's milk and you do nothing with the milk, well, then you're not earning any money. So, one of the first initiatives was to ensure that the goat is transformed, the goat's milk is transformed into a yogurt. And the yogurt is enriched with a local organic banana and an organic pineapple in order to have the best and the freshest yogurt that is available on the local market, which of course is picked up very quickly by the hotels in Tenerife. The result is practically very important. One liter of goat's milk is paid two euro sixty five. Now for two euro sixty five, if you have fifty goats, we can all make the calculation. You're earning a hundred thousand euro per year. At a hundred thousand euro per year, you're making a very good living on an island like El Hierro. Now the experience of the goats was repeated with the fish, was repeated with the wine, the grapes. It was repeated on a continuous basis in eight different sectors. And at once we realized that there were 250 members of the grape cooperative which started producing wine, 180,000 bottles of wine. We realized that there was a cooperative for 45 fishermen who now have the youngsters pushing in order to have more fish for them because they have created a special reserve where the older fish are laying their eggs and therefore the density of fish has increased by factor 10. So they're only doing line fishing. They have realized that this uh, cheese production creates, of course, more people having goats, and then they reopen the slaughterhouse, and the whole local economy started developing, whereas the traditional economists were saying, you don't have economy of scale. Now, what do they have? They have the value generated, they have double the amount of employment, they're tripling the revenues, and this is a local economy. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to have some concrete cases, and of course, an island in Spain is not Dalarna. We cannot copy-paste. But what we can see is that if we are willing to focus on generating the value, value added, and if we're willing to focus on federating people together in communities that are focusing on getting this done, we're able to raise the capital. In total, over 25 years, this island with only, uh, only 10,000 inhabitants has mobilized about uh, 17 million euros in investments to get the structure going. The result is that people move back to the island. Now, I know the same challenge Sweden is facing. Too many people are moving from the north to the south. People want to be in Stockholm and Gothenburg and perhaps in Malmö. But what we need to focus on, what are the opportunities to create a livelihood where people can have a decent living and of course enjoy the extraordinary quality of life, which in Darla, honestly speaking, is from just about all perspectives much better than you could ever live downtown in Stockholm. Now, these experiences are being expanded around the world. We started 25 years ago in El Hierro, and now we're looking, for example, at the region of La Bretagne, Brittany, this incredible region that is recognized by the world as having some of the best fish and the best food uh, is a region that unfortunately has been caught up in this globalization trend. And so they started to focus on producing cheaper milk and cheaper cheese and uh, more fish. And what is the result? The result is that 
they have uh, taken out all the fish stocks. Fish catch is 60% below the best levels of the 70s. And how many young people dream of having a career in fishing? Just about no one. There is no more dream. And now if you don't have young people dreaming about it, what do you think is going to be the opportunity to implement and realize a transformation of your economy where Dalarna and so many other extraordinary communities in the north of Sweden and elsewhere in Sweden can have a vibrant life with culture and tradition and agriculture and manufacturing. We very often think it's technologies that make the difference and we're saying of course technologies play an extraordinary role but we need to have a business model that focuses on generating value. Now, generating value on your own is not possible. You need to federate, you need to work together, and you need to combine. So in the case of Brittany, a series of initiatives were undertaken along the same spirit, but of course here you have three million inhabitants and you don't have a mere 10,000 inhabitants. The power of the fish catch that we have today is that we need to look not just at the reserves of the fish, we need to look at the whole ecosystem of the coast. And if you're thinking about Brittany, of course, you're thinking about seaweeds because it's the largest seaweed harvesting region of Europe next to Galicia in Spain. The seaweeds are harvested and traditionally it's used for cosmetics. It is used for some exclusive food. But let's be honest, how much volume is that representing? Today, the first platforms are floating in Brittany, whereby a thousand tons of seaweed is produced per hectare per year. Now, let's just remember, if you have genetically modified soy or you have your best type of corn, I mean, you can hardly make the 10 tons uh, of produce per hectare. The sea generates us a thousand tons. Now a thousand tons is possible because you're operating 3D in three dimensions in the water. You can have a three meter deep floating platform and what we see is that this creates a tremendous conversion opportunity for making biogas. The most productive biogas is biogas from seaweeds. Now no one looked at the sea for seaweeds but now we're looking at the seaweeds as a production of gas because Brittany is totally dependent on the import of energy. So the gas is an opportunity but the byproducts from the seaweeds is fertilizer. For every thousand tons of fresh seaweeds there is 20 tons of high phosphorus and high nitrogen content fertilizer. Now 20 tons is produced with the residues of the gas production. Traditionally, we take gas out of the earth and burn it and have emissions. And of course, we take gas to produce fertilizer and emit nitric oxide in the process. Now we have the two in one. Now, it doesn't take an economist to realize that for the fertilizing world, this is a highly competitive proposal. And this is a marvelous uh, substitute instead of depending on your gas from Russia or Norway for you Swedes. You know, it is an opportunity to look at this in a fresh way, but by going through the process of discovering what is all available in the sea, we found that along the coast there are these sea worms. And these sea worms, they have a hemoglobin, red blood cells, that allow to absorb 150 times more oxygen than we could ever store in our hemoglobin. And as a result, we now have the opportunity to transform the old installations for fish farming in a system for farming sea worms, extracting the hemoglobin, and that becomes a liquid that will preserve organs for transplants over three to five days. What a revolution! But out of a ton of sea worms, you only have six liters of hemoglobin, and you have 994 liters of everything else. Now that everything else is now the feed for farming sea trouts. And these sea trouts are farmed in the old installations of the fish. 
The fish ports are down in economics and now we can revive them. There was only one problem we needed to solve. What are we feeding the sea worms with? And very quickly we identified the three bio breweries, biological organic breweries, that have a lot of yeast and the yeast is what we feed to the sea worms. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of very pragmatic approach, a fresh look at available resources. But what are we doing? First of all, we're generating value with what is locally available, but not only value of what the farmers can continue producing, what the fishermen can continue producing. You know, of course all the black um, uh, the, the, the black grains, uh, the buckwheats, uh, uh, are farmed locally and gives the farmer an opportunity to now be able to integrate into the beer. And the waste is part of the feed for the sea worms. Now that kind of integrated thinking is how nature works. And this is how we believe that we should have for the future the economy develop. I must admit, I do not know well enough uh, the north of Sweden to be able to imagine these strategies. But gone along those lines, I hope that the case of uh, El Hierro in Spain and Brittany in France has given you an insight of how we can strategically look at very pragmatic solutions using stranded assets like the old fish ports and using available resources that are continuously produced by nature without having to make a major effort and how we can focus on generating value so that by having the value we are able to change the economy. The objective for us is transformation of the economy. The objective is not to substitute one thing with another. We need to have communities where people can live happy and healthy and earn a living by using the natural resources in a sustainable way. And if ever Sweden, you farmers from Sweden were interested and explore this in a very systemic way, we will be happy to serve. Thank you. Hey, dog.